Good day everyone. So we are in module 4, lesson 1, and we will discuss about online distance education and communities of learners. So here are the intended learning outcomes. So students are expected to identify flexible learning through online communication, synchronous and asynchronous modality. Third, Describe flexible learning environment that enhances collaboration with the use of technology tools. So what is flexible learning environment? Learning nowadays is viewed differently. The present generation of learners has access to information at their fingertips. The teacher is no longer seen as, the, as basically the dispenser of knowledge, but rather as one who expertly directs the learners to take their own track in searching for answers to questions raised inside the classroom. Then they bring this back to the class for further discussion until perhaps resolutions are agreed. They can search the web and discover the breadth of information related to the lesson. And they even have the patience to stay in front of the computer for an unusually longer time in search for more articles and multimedia materials that simplify of a challenging topic. And that is why they can sometimes learn more than what is confined in the four corners of the classroom. Every chance or corner becomes a learning space. It is clear that learning takes place anywhere and this adds to the concept of flexibility in the learning environment. So with technology, students can possibly continue to join class sessions even if they are not physically around. The learning space becomes virtual or mediated. The library is not only a physical structure where they can read published books, but has also become virtual. Next is online distance learning. So online distance learning is not a new concept. Some schools, higher education institution in the country, and educational agencies such as the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Innovation and Educational Technology provide this mode of learning and it allows flexibility in learning to a certain extent. So I believe that mostly of the uh, schools, especially universities, are using or applying the online distance learning. Next is the different platforms. So, these are free programs designed for educational purposes. It has features that are patterned after the instructional activities of a teacher in a physical classroom. When you use this, you can actually hold a lesson, post questions for discussion, hold an online chat discussion, give assessment activities, and provide references or links to other online materials. Features relevant to instruction and facilitating of learning. So, the first example is Modal. Modal was created by Martin Dogumas, founder and CEO of Modal. Modal stands for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment, which is an open source software. It is a learning management system or LMS that supports teaching and learning. Next one is Google Classroom and Moodle which is very common um, platform used today. Classroom is a free service for teach teachers and student. students. It is an LMS platform that is accessible through your Google account. You can create classes and perform your rules and function as a facilitator of learning. In 2018, Edmodo was created by Nick Borge, Jeff O'Hara, and Crystal Hotter. So, According to Martina 2015, she compared Edmodo and Google Classroom in her blog. Although she discussed several commonalities, there are apparently differences but with technology. Things evolve in so short a time. What is clear is that they created apps that can integrate well with class classroom activities. The decisions lies the decision lies in the teacher who will determine what works best in her teaching and learning context. So both are amazing tools that can be explored. Next is Escology. Escology is another LMS founded in 2019 by Jeremy Fredman, Ryan Wong, and Tim Trinidad and Bill Candler. 
you can actually create your own online distance uh, education learning system using any of these platforms. Next is MOOC. Another recent modality to learning is the Massive Open Online Course or MOOC. It is a model for delivering learning content online to any person who wants to take a course. It allows one to pursue learning even outside of university or higher education formal structure. Those who are working can enroll in MOOCs with no limit on attendance. As long as you are willing to learn, you can engage in an area of discipline and learn. It allows interconnectedness um, among peoples in the world to discuss and share recent developments in their common field of interest. So next is the synchronous and asynchronous. I think we all heard about this when the pandemic comes because it was implemented on to us on how we are going to attend our class. In a flexible learning mode, the activities can be done in two ways. First is synchronous and second is asynchronous. An online chat or real time is a synchronous session. Course participants meet in a virtual classroom and discuss a topic in the lesson. So when wherever they are situated in the world, they agree on a scheduled session and log in to join the live class. The LMS has the these features. So the teacher called as the online tutor facilitate who facilitates the discussion and ideas are posted in an actual live class. One cannot lecture and take all the time in explaining. It is in this mode the course participants are made to be engaged in the flow of discussion that is the of discussion. That is why the online tutor has to plan out the instructions, guide, and facilitating the discourse. So, using Skype or any platform like Google Meet or Zoom in holding a live class is another example. Member of the class log in in their Sky account at a given time to join the video conferencing. Another important feature is the asynchronous session. This is when questions or tasks are posted in course participants answer the question or post the reply at any time most convenient to them. They can still participate in the discussion by replying to the post. One advantage is that you can take your time when replying. The LMS mentioned in this lesson has a feature that can allow an asynchronous session. So what are the examples we use in our university? So the best example we use is the U step, um, the Google Classroom. Um, what else? Uh, email or Facebook page. So that is one of the examples that we use in doing our asynchronous session. Next is blended learning. Another way of handling flexible learning is by combining modalities of instructional delivery. Blended learning is a combination of a learning activities wherein a part of the lesson is delivered online, while the other part is handled in actual physical, physical setting of a classroom. So here are kinds of the blended learning. First is the modal one, which is the face-to-face -face driver. In the face-to-face -face model, the teacher delivers the curriculum most of the time and utilizes online learning at a certain time with a purpose or augment of, of provide an alternative experience. Instruction is provided in a computer laboratory or assigned tasks are uploaded online. Number two is, or model two, is rotation. In a particular course or subject, students rotate on a fixed schedule between learning online and a one-to-one. -on, one -one. Self-paced learning environment and being inside the classroom with a face-to-face teacher. This is the model that is between the traditional face-to-face -face learning and online learning. So best example for this is when your, when your instructor is um, wa wants you to do the, wants to meet you virtually on the first week and then second week he will or he or she will meet you uh, physically in your school or university and then the third week you will uh, meet again in virtual and next we will meet again in um, physical uh, learning. 
so it will rotate next is model 3 or flex this model uses an online platform that delivers most of the course support to learning is provided and needed through an on-site support or by an online tutor who facilitates the tutorial or small group sessions sessions can be arranged into synchronous or asynchronous course participants may work on their tasks at any convenient time as long as it is within the confines of the course duration number four online lab online lab model uses an online platform in delivering the course but located in a physical classroom or computer laboratory since the lessons are in modular format and available in the online program the teachers a uh, teacher's assistants supervise these classes however they may not provide the needed expertise of learner seeks assistance furthermore students who are enrolled in online lab model of blended learning may be enrolled in a traditional classroom courses at the same time and therefore have block schedules number five or model five self blend the self blend model is a system provided by the school where the students can choose the course they would like to have in addition to their typical brick or mortar classroom classes this model is always remote a major difference from the online lab number six or model six online driver the online driver model utilizes a platform and a teacher that delivers the curricula students remotely work on their program and most of the time if ever there is a face-to-face -face component it is in mode it is mode optional or even if it is required for the student to go to the physical learning environment such as school then it can be extracurricular activities augmenting the curriculum so planning and managing blended learning experience are very similar to planning and managing a brick and a mortar school with courses and subjects integrating technology it needs to be system-wide as the school makes a plan develop guidelines for students to follow for the use of technology in the blended format and provide a resource guide a lot of preparation is needed in designing a, uh, in designing a blended format technology has to be prepared the back end and front end infrastructures of blended learning have to be put in a place as well as the content in varied multimedia formats so online communities of learning or social networking what is networking a network is defined as the group of individuals who communicates and connects on a regular basis if an individual has a personal network of people one can tap of the potential contacts for social, educational, or professional purposes. So, networking is the exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or a special interest. Usually, in an informal social setting, networking often begins with a single point of common ground. Professionals use networking to expand their circles of acquaintances, finds out the job of opportunities in the fields and increase their awareness of news and trends in their fields or the greater world so these are the examples of the social networking platforms first is facebook twitter linkedin google youtube pinterest instagram tumblr myspace Flickr, and bebo The dangers of using social networking sites Just as there are benefits of having an account in a social network site or using in in a teaching and learning context, there are risks to consider as well. First is making friends with strangers who may actually be a predator or a cyber bully. Youngsters get bullied by others who may not even be connected as friends in a social networking website. There are also trolls who actually instigate conflict, misunderstanding, or emotional response by eliciting anger or ill feelings from other users through social media. They post messages that are inflammatory, 
or controversial. Getting hooked on internet and may learn to ignore the real world. Their ability to socialize is incapacitated as they devote hours or days on gaming or using the computer manifesting abuse to themselves. Safeguarding oneself when engaging in social networking sites. First is social networking account has password and login details. Secure password and keep them private. Second, log out every time you use public computers. Third, regularly check privacy settings of social networking websites so that only direct friends or those particularly known can see the post. Fourth, online posts are saved and may become a permanent reputation. As you use the internet, you leave a digital footprint which can be traced back to you. Fifth, do not accept invites from contacts unless you know them personally or you know are you sure of their identity. Six, seriously consider the effect of possible posts on others before deciding to do so. If posts, in examples are facts, picture, and videos, could be considered offensive or humiliating another person, then you refrain from posting or uploading it. Lastly, using appropriate language is essential. The tone when communicating or sending social networking messages should be respectful. Eighth, better be safe than sorry. You should accept friends and connections when you are sure of the person's identity. Personally, meeting someone you only met online is discouraged. Even if the sincerity of having personal meeting looks convincing, it would be better if you will be accompanied. When there is an indi- indication of harassment or abuse, it is advised that you report this by clicking the report button of abuse. It is better skill still to talk to the friends or trusted adults about the case. And lastly, bullying takes place even in social networking websites. Cyberbullying uses the site's messages, updates, and other functions to harass, intimidate, humiliate, taunt, or pick on the individual. When this happens, you can do the following actions. For A, ignore the behavior or by not responding at all. B, block the person. C, click the report button of abuse. Or D, Talk to a trustworthy adult about it. So that's all our lesson for today. Um, I am with my report mate, Maandi Greca Jasmine Camille, and yours truly, Mabailan Bamji. And that's the topic about the online distance learning and communities of learners. Thank you so much for listening and God bless.